Good evening and welcome to our Life Group Online here at San Diego New Life. We're excited to have you with us here tonight. And uh, we, we hope that uh, uh, we have something special for you here this evening. As a matter of fact, I know we have something very special for you. And we're, we're, we're excited about, uh, about this evening together, spending this time together with you. Um, you know, in my own mind, I'm wondering how, how you're doing right now. You know, I'm hoping that you're, you're uh, staying safe. I'm hoping that every single one of you are well. We've tried to reach out to many of you uh, through phone and text messages and a little bit of everything, trying to just check up on you a little bit. But uh, I want you to know I really miss everybody, miss being uh, able to come together. But this is, I guess this is uh, uh, the best alternative right for right now. I can imagine that uh, uh, for you that uh, are used to going to work every day, that, uh, you know, you, you're probably feeling a little closed in right now. Uh, you're not uh, in your normal routines, and everything is just kind of, uh, uh, you know, just feeling all closed in right now. And I'm wondering in my own mind about all of you men out there, you know, for all of you that have told your wife that, uh, you would get around to it, to doing something with that she wants you to do, that you would get around to it uh, when you have time. I'm wondering how you're doing with all of that right now because you've got plenty of time, right? No, and for you parents, I've been wondering how you're uh, managing your children there at home and uh, everything. I think that you probably got a better appreciation of your, your child's teachers by now, right? Uh, but anyway, God is good. Uh, all the time, God is good. Is, isn't that the truth? But uh, tonight I want to share with you a passage of Scripture, and the Scripture has everything to do with what we're going to be talking about here tonight. The passage that I want to share with you is in the book of Psalms, uh, the fifth chapter, verses 11 and 12. And this is what the Bible tells us here tonight. Psalms chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. It says, but let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them never, uh, let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O oh Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him with a shield. I love this passage of Scripture. As a matter of fact, I love any passage that has to do with joy and rejoicing. I, I, I love those. I, I, I love that, that theme, joy and rejoicing. As a matter of fact, when we look at that word rejoicing in the Lord, as a matter of fact, that, and that, that's, a, that's a great phrase that, that uh, we're going to be looking at tonight uh, together, rejoicing in the Lord. That is a recurring theme throughout the entire Word of God. And, and, and part of the reason for this theme uh, is that as people who really know God, we should be excited for all the blessings and all the benefits that, that God gives us and bestows upon us, right? And when the world looks at us as Christian men and women and the joy that's in our heart, they should see us. As people who rejoice not only when in good times, but they should see us as people who rejoice all in all times, right? And the reason, because simply God is good. God is good. As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we should be joyful and, and be glad as, because we walk with the King of kings and the Lord of Lords. But let's be honest here. Most of us, we do very well uh, when everything is good. We rejoice and we are glad uh, in our hearts when everything is, is good, everything is going well. But, but the question that we have to come to grips with is how do we shout for joy when life kind of kicks us to the curb? How can we rejoice in those times when, when, when it seems that everything around us is going wrong? See, that's what we want to look at here tonight. 
this is, this is what I want you to know as we look at this lesson. When it comes to rejoicing, and keep in mind the questions, how, how do we shout for joy when life kicks us to the curb? How can we rejoice when everything around, uh, around us seems to be going wrong? So I want you to know that rejoicing, no matter what happens, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how hard, how difficult the situation is, no matter what we're going through today together uh, in, in this nation and in this world, rejoicing is a choice. Oh, yes, it is. It's a choice. It's not based on circumstances. Rejoicing isn't based on what's happening for the good or, or, or for the better or whatever. Rejoicing is not based on circumstances. Rejoicing isn't even based uh, on, on the situations that, that we find ourselves in. But rejoicing is based on the Lord himself, on his goodness, and on his grace. Rejoicing is based on, on your relationship, my relationship with the Lord, our God. So how do you see the world and the circumstances that you are faced with? How are you looking at things today? Are you upset? Are you mad? Are you angry about what's happening? I, I, I would imagine that most of us are pretty angry of what, what's happening all around us right now, right? And maybe rightfully so. Maybe we uh, can get a little bit angry and sin not. I don't know, but... Uh, but, you know, we've got to look and see what it is that, that we're seeing, not only in the world and around us, and how are we seeing that? Are we looking at the circumstances around us through our own eyes? Are we looking at everything that's happening through our own eyes, or are we looking at everything that's happening through the eyes of of God, Because if we're looking through the eyes of God, I can tell you for sure that God is seeing things a whole lot different than what you and I are seeing things, right? See, for example, the Apostle Paul, he writes a letter to the church at, at, at Philippi. And while he, when he writes this letter, he's sitting in a Roman prison. And in that letter that he begins to write... He tells the people and tells the church in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, he says this. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Now, to me, that's a powerful message. Rejoice in the Lord always. When I look at that word always, I'm seeing it doesn't matter what the situation is. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. You got to rejoice in the Lord. That's what Paul is telling us. It doesn't matter uh, the aches and the pains that you feel in your body. It doesn't matter uh, how your boss has treated you or, 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 or whatever. What matters is that you know God. And the command for us is to rejoice in Him. And not only did He tell us to rejoice, but He says it twice here in this short passage of scripture. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Now let's keep in mind here that, that uh, while Paul is writing this letter where is he? That's right. He's sitting in prison writing this letter. And, and let's be real now. And let's be honest. Paul wasn't rejoicing about being incarcerated, right? He wasn't, uh, th this wasn't his heart's desire. He didn't want to be there in jail, but he was. And he was rejoicing in the Lord himself, not because he was there, but because of God's goodness that he had already experienced in his life. And that was the key. Uh, the, the most important key for Paul here, and it's a great key for us to get a hold of. See, we understand joy, and let's just use that, that word, joy. We understand joy as a feeling of great pleasure 
and happiness, right? It's, it, joy is an emotion we feel when life is good. When the sun is shining, we feel joy. When, when our team is winning, we feel joy. When, when we are healthy, when we're happy, we, we, what? we feel joy, right? And most people uh, that I know don't typically speak of the happiness of heartbreak or the joy of heartbreak. Most people don't speak of the pleasure or the joy of a migraine, right? No, they, they don't speak of the joy of losing, right? No. But Paul, in a sense, was speaking this. I'm in prison, but thanks be unto God, I'm alive and I'm well. And I've experienced the greatness and the goodness of God, not only out of prison, but even in prison, right? So if you study the book of Philippians, and I would encourage you to do so, you'll find that, that Philippians is, is the most joyful book of the Bible. The Apostle Paul uh, uses the words, the Greek words for joy and rejoicing 16 times in the 104 verses of this letter that he wrote. And yet, again, where was he writing this letter from? From a dingy Roman prison. A place we would typically associate with misery and trial, right? Most people would assume that this would be the opposite of joy. Paul, he's, he's surrounded at this time while he's writing. He's surrounded by everything conceivable uh, that is uh, is an obstacle of joy he wasn't surrounded by joy and yet he still seems happy he still seems full of joy he still seems excited and he's trying to encourage the church that no matter what's going on in your life be joyful paul was an example of what he was really writing to the church. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 1, and again in Philippians 4 and 4, Paul commands us to rejoice in the Lord. For the Apostle Paul, the phrase, this is important here, that, that phrase, the Lord, rejoice in the Lord, when he's talking about the Lord, regularly he meant Jesus Christ during this time. You see, Jesus, and this is what Paul understood. He said, I can rejoice in the Lord because I can look at what Jesus went through, the suffering and the pain that, that he experienced to save me, to help me, to allow me to remain joyful in heart. Uh, Jesus went through uh, the uh, crucifixion. He, he, he uh, went uh, by way of the cross. He, he died for us. But God highly exalted him. And every one of us, Paul knew, would one day pay homage to his universal reign, the reign of Jesus Christ forever. For Paul, the reality, and really for you and I today, rejoicing in the Lord meant, and it still means, that these truths about Jesus Christ, about his birth, about his life, about his death, about his resurrection, about his soon coming, everything that Jesus did and, and will do and wants to do personally and profoundly affects Every single one of us. It affects us personally because rejoicing in the Lord means knowing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and our most prized treasure, right? He is a treasure. I don't know how you look at Jesus, but he is, he is so valuable to me in my life. And I am so grateful 
to him today. But, uh, but, but you know, it, which he allows me to rejoice in him. We rejoice because of the good news of what Christ has already done for us. Listen, if, if, if he has already healed your body at any other time, you can rejoice in the Lord still today. If you are saved, if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can rejoice in the Lord no matter what you're going through because he is still Jesus. He is still alive and he is still well and moving through this land today. So we can rejoice because of this good news of what Christ has done for us. We rejoice because Jesus has decisively delivered us from sin's penalty. And one day, yes, one day, he will completely deliver us from sin's reality, right? Rejoicing in the Lord means that God gives us deeper, purer, sweeter, more lasting pleasure and gladness than anything this world has to offer. So as Paul says in Philippians chapter 3 verse 8, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, rejoicing in the Lord today means that for us it means that there's a new song in our hearts, a song of the redeemed. Are you redeemed today by the blood of the Lamb? We can sing and we can shout about what God has done for us. Right, right now, whatever you're dealing with, if you're if you're low in spirit, if you if you if you uh, are going through a trial or a test, or maybe the kids are getting on your last nerve, I want you just to shout out to the Lord a big praise to Him right now. And you'll see things begin to change. If nothing else, you'll probably surprise your kids, right? <laughs> uh, but, you know, let's, we can shout. Because rejoicing is a choice for us. It's a choice. We choose. We can choose to rejoice in the Lord because of what he has done for us. Rejoicing, again, means that new song, the song of the redeemed. It means that, that the trouble and the sorrow and the problems of life cannot drown out Jesus. It cannot drown out our praise of the Lord. It can't drown out our worship of God. Jesus is the chief object of our joy today. Amen. Circumstances in life, they change with the wind. But one thing that never changes, that is Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. He says that, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And with that hope and with that promise, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Right? So he never changes. And as long as we focus on him, we can rejoice and we can shout praises to his name. We can know that his blessings will come even in hard times. Times such as maybe you're experiencing right now. Guess what? God is still blessing you. God is waking you up in the morning, allowing you to see the light of another day that he has created for you. So rejoice in the Lord, my friend. Rejoice and be glad. Each and every one of you here today that, that, that uh, are, are under the sound of my voice, you can rejoice in the Lord knowing that he is blessing you even in spite of your circumstances, right? In spite of your circumstances, he is still blessing you. And we can know his blessings come to us, no matter what we're faced with. He is faithful to us every step of the way. And he uses our difficulties in life every day 
to teach us to trust him so that we can have something to shout about. Are you trusting the Lord today? Are you just turning everything over to him and and, and trusting him? Are you allowing your family see you, see your joy in the Lord right now? Are you allowing those that, that are calling you see and hear the, the joy of the Lord in you? That's important. Because maybe somebody might call you that's a little bit discouraged and they need some encouragement. They need some hope and help. And maybe the sound of your voice is just what they're going to need to hear that joy of the Lord in you. Wow, this is ministry for each and every one of us. This is what life groups are all about. You can contact each other. You can, you can reach out still to each other. And you can encourage one another in the Lord. You can, you can shout today in your home and rejoice in the Lord as, as you kneel and pray and seek the Lord. Wow, that's, that's a blessing that we have from the Lord our God today. Take advantage of that. And let Him just just give you a greater joy than you've ever had before in your life. There's a passage, another passage of Scripture in Psalms uh, 80, uh, 89, verses 14 through 15 that I want to share with you. This passage tells us this. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your countenance. I love that passage of Scripture there. The righteous and justice. That's the foundation of God's throne. Righteousness and justice. God is righteous and he is a just God, mercy and truth go before him. But you got to get this. Because of all of that, we are blessed. And we can know the joyful sound. Now, that in this passage, that, that phrase, the joyful sound, in this verse, it, it, this is a shout of God's people. They lifted up their voices and they shouted unto the Lord when they saw the Lord high and lifted up as they looked and saw the righteousness and the justice of God, as they saw the mercy and the truth of God, they just had to lift up their voices and shout to the Lord for joy. My friend, this, is, this needs to be us today, whatever we're going through. This needs to be us. We need to not look at the circumstances, but let's look to the Lord and see the righteousness and the justice of God. Let's see his mercy and his truth and, and his grace today. And let's just shout out to the Lord praises unto him. Amen. And let's experience the, jo experience the joy of the Lord today. The Bible encourages us in Psalms 47 Verse 1 says to clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. There's a lot of times when we, uh, today, when we can, we shout and we make noise at, 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 at some sporting event or, or some uh, other activity that we enjoy. Yeah, we will clap and we will cheer and we will shout as loud as we possibly can. But a lot, a lot of times when it comes to church, when it comes to praising God for his goodness and his mercy, sometimes we struggle with that. Sometimes it's difficult for us to shout because we're looking at circumstances around us. You know, we, we think that it's easier to shout for joy in the house of God. And that might be true, but, but listen, this, this is the building. You are the church. And you need to shout unto the Lord. People need to see the joy of the Lord in you, working through you, amen, and, and, and this, we are meant, listen, this is, this is important, you and I are meant to rejoice and shout about Jesus, so, so we shouldn't struggle about this, we are meant, we were created to rejoice in the Lord, we were created to shout praises on 
to the Lord. We were meant to praise his name out loud, right? The psalmist also tells us in Psalms 100 verse 1 to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. I want to ask you tonight, when was the last time you shouted a praise unto the Lord? And I mean literally shouted a praise unto the Lord. Maybe, maybe some uh, have never done that. You know, you like to uh, hold everything inside. You like to uh, pray silently. You like to just worship silently. You like to just kind of go along and not let anybody hear you praise. And maybe you're thinking, well, you know, even if I am silent about my praise, yeah, God still hears me. Yeah, I know he does. But listen to the word of God. He says, shout unto the Lord, all ye lands. We need to take the time to shout praises to the Lord. So when was the last time that you shouted a praise to the Lord? Maybe for some of you, the last time you shouted a praise to the Lord was when you came here, when you were able to come to church and, and, and come together and worship the Lord. Maybe that's the time you, last time you clapped your hands and lifted up your hands and praised the Lord. Well, listen, God does not dwell in temples, okay? I mean, yeah, this is his house. We've dedicated it as his house, but yet he dwells here. You are the temple of the living God, and he dwells within you. He doesn't dwell in, in, in just uh, buildings like this. He dwells in you, and you were created to shout a praise unto the Lord. So if the last time you praised the Lord was the last time you came to church, my friend, I encourage you tonight to praise the Lord. See, we don't rejoice because of our circumstances. We, we rejoice because of who God really is. Today, this day that you and I have lived already is a day that the Lord has made. If he allows us to wake up and see the light of another day tomorrow, it's a day that he created for us. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. No matter what you are going through today or what you'll go through tomorrow, you can rejoice in Jesus if you choose to because rejoicing is a choice. You can choose to rejoice in the Lord or you can choose to succumb to the problems and the troubles of the world that you're faced with today. But what do you say? Why not rejoice in the Lord? Why not shout glory to the Lord. Will you make that choice to rejoice in the Lord? Honestly, will you make that choice to rejoice in the Lord no matter what? Right now, right now, right right where you are. I want you with me. Let's make a choice to, to rejoice in the Lord. I, I want somebody just to shout glory to the Lord, okay? I'm going to shout praises to the Lord. I want you right now take the opportunity to say, praise God, hallelujah, glory to the Lord God Almighty. I want you to praise the Lord. I, I know maybe you're feeling a little, little nervous about that. Maybe you're thinking about the, the neighbors are going to hear me and the children, what are they going to think? Man, I, I, I hope they hear you, and I hope the children think that that's my mom and dad. They love the Lord, amen. Get your family together. Bring them together. Shout glory together, and let's worship God, I want you to make this your prayer, all right? Make this your prayer. Lord, may I always have a shout in my heart for you. Let me never take your blessings for granted. And may others see my rejoicing in you. Help me set my eyes on you, O oh Lord. Help me remember that you are my rock, and my fortress. Will you make that your prayer? Will you make that your prayer? Oh, hallelujah to God. Listen, this brings us to the conclusion of our, our life group lesson for tonight. But we want to thank you again for being with us this evening. God bless you so very much. We appreciate you. Again, we miss you so very much. And 
wish we could have the opportunity to come together. But listen, listen, keep doing what uh, uh, our government officials are asking us to do. And, and the better we do that, the sooner we're going to be able to come back together. I like what our president was talking about, that he would love to see us back in church by Easter. I'm excited about that. Well, I want you to join me in prayer about that, that God would make that possible so we can have a great time in the Lord together. All right? We love you again. We thank God for you, and we're praying for you always. Have a good night.